the first app that you guys need to download in order to screen record your sessions with the audio and with the microphone audio is this one right here. It's called Black Hole and it's going to give you a few options. You can choose to donate or not donate. You just put your email in, right? And they are going to send you a download link that looks like this. Bam. Hopefully I got it on the screen. Then you're going to click the link and you're going to follow the download instructions just like anything you download to your computer, right? Once you have that downloaded, you're going to go and search on your computer audio MIDI setup. It's, it has a little keyboard icon, right? So you're going to see this black hole two channel, depending on which one you downloaded, you can download a two channel, or I think there's a higher channel version. I, I use the two channel cause it's simple. Anyway, copy these settings for that. If this is not in your audio MIDI setup, you didn't download it correctly, but it should be there. You should also see your Scarlet or whatever audio interface you're using. And you should also see, you know, your MacBook Pro speakers, your MacBook Pro microphone, yada, 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 right? First thing you're going to do, and this is the tricky part, is you're going to go and you're going to create an aggregate device, right? And you're going to name that device QuickTime input or screen record input, whichever one. And you're going to see all these options here. First, you're going to set the sample rate to 44.1 and you're going to have the clock source be the black hole two channel. Then you're going to click in order in this order. This is very important. You need to click the left box of the black hole channel, and then you're going to click the left box of the scarlet or your interface and the right box as well. Okay. These boxes will not be checked when you open this up, hopefully. But when you check them, it's going to bring whatever you check to the top of this list. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So first you're going to check black hole, then you're going to check scarlet. And your, your page should look like this, right? Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to click add multi output device. And that's going to add another um, device here, right? And it's going to have this gray icon or a like a two two box icon type situation. And you're going to name that screen record with audio output or just screen record with audio, whatever you, you want to name it. I like to put input and output just so I know for a future. We're going to get to that point. And on this, you're going to do the same thing on this one. You're going to do, you're going to check black hole two channel. You're going to check your interface second. Make sure the right check mark is checked for your interface. 44.1 sample rate, black hole two channel, master device. Boom, copy that. Now, you've got both of these set up in your computer. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to your Mac system preferences and we're going to test this out. First, we're going to test this with the MacBook. So we're going to go into the sound preferences. And as you can see, I'm screen recording right now. And my input is set to my QuickTime player input. Now that's grabbing the microphone audio. So if you don't have this set as your input, you're not going to get any microphone audio. And I'm not recording anything. I'm just getting the dry audio from uh, the interface through the microphone, right? Now output, you're going to set your screen record, screen record with audio output. I don't have it named output, but I just know that this one goes for the output. All right, you guys. So once you guys want to start recording and you've got all the preferences set up, you're going to go and search QuickTime. Once QuickTime is open, you can go ahead and click cancel on this. And then you're going to go file, new screen recording. And this little thing is going to come up on your screen. You're going to choose record entire screen. There's an option to record a portion of the screen that it lets you cut out. But for this example, we're going to use this one, record entire screen. Now you're going to see your cursor has turned into a little camera icon. And I have a monitor set up. So if I'm not going to record my monitor and I'm going to record this screen, you can see it highlights them. And once you click in the screen that you're recording, it's going to start recording. So I'm going to click. Now it's recording this screen. It's moving around. It's moving around. I'm talking into my microphone a little bit. Once you want to stop, 
I'm gonna click this little guy. It's gonna bring up what you just recorded and I'm gonna click play. There's me moving around. I'm talking into my microphone a little bit. <laughs> and there's that. So it captured what I recorded through my microphone. I didn't have to open up a project or anything, but if I did have a project open with the preferences set to the right things, it would record both the project audio and the microphone audio. So let's open up a DAW here real quick. We're gonna use Logic as an example first. You're gonna go into your preferences audio. This is with any DAW. There's probably a folder or a page that looks similar to this. You're gonna change the output device again to screen record output and the input to the input that you made, whatever you named it. I named it QuickTime player input. Confusing for no reason. <laughs> Just name it screen record with audio output and screen record with audio input. Set those as your parameters and your preferences audio section of your DAW. Now we're going to test it. Toss a beat in there. And if you guys can hear it and my mic, that means we've successfully done this. Damn. You're probably asking, well, doesn't this take up a lot of space? Uh, yes, it does. Boom. Okay, guys. So we got that figured out. Let's try another DAW. We're going to try a uh, machine. You can do this in any DAW as long as you have the settings set up right. Machine, preferences, audio. It looks like I have the out, the input is wrong. I need to change that to QuickTime input and the output needs to be, what is it folks? Screen record output. All right, let's see if this beat sounds good. Do this in any DAW, guys. Once you want to stop recording, you know all you gotta do is click this little tiny square slash circle slash square within a circle thing. And once you click that, you're done screen recording, and it should sound really good, you guys. It should sound amazing. Here is a real quick example of what I just recorded. You so you can hear the audio in order to get this going is called Black Hole. This is what the website looks like. Existential Audio um, Black Hole or Existential Dot. It sounds great. All right, y'all. So the next thing you guys want to download in order to start editing these videos and make them kind of different and cool. And this is just something that everyone's using right now. It's called CapCut. This is what it looks like right here. I'm going to click that. Well, first you're gonna to go to the app store and download it, it's free. And then you're just gonna click new project, boom. And this is basically like a fancy iMovie, but it has so many cool features that are so intuitive and great for making short form, long form content like we be doing out here with the production stuff, with the music stuff. You're gonna import your audio here. You've got a lot of different options here. It's kind of like if you've ever edited something on TikTok, it's kind of like that, but a little bit easier to use. And I'm not going to go into everything in this video about this, but I would really recommend everyone downloading this because it's so easy to make cool videos with this. Just download this app. It's quick and easy. It makes it super easy to format your videos. You can click this little ratio button. I would highly recommend everybody get on this because this is the new wave. All right. It's not too complicated. There are other apps that you can download that will do screen recording. I personally just thought this was the easiest way. It becomes a super easy workflow to just start screen recording really quickly. And I just, I hope this helps guys. I hope this was a little bit easier to understand. And for all my producer friends out there, I want to start seeing y'all making these videos, bro. So save this video. If you don't got time to figure it out right now, save it and go through and look at it again when you guys want to figure out how to set all this stuff up. I appreciate y'all for watching. Tuna OTB. I'm out of here.